instantly. I felt a feeling I hadn't felt in years. One of uncertainty. And it angered me. I was not that timid, afraid little girl anymore. I didn't need to be wild by his attention anymore. You see, when I was no longer under the close watch of my father or my brother, or even him for that matter, I found out that I was beautiful and that men were attracted to me. And I know this sound bad, but a lot of them. I mean, look at Heman. He confessed his love to me in song quite often. I looked at my robe. I want a divorce, I told him dryly. He chuckled, turning to look back at the fire. It sounded as if it was something he didn't do often, which was strange coming from Monroe, who always found something to laugh about. The chuckle died down and his countenance went back to being fierce. Hell no. I frowned reminding myself once again that I was not that little girl that needed to be intimidated by him. Why not? I asked. He didn't answer me at first. He just stared down into that flame. When finally he spoke, I realized that this was my first time speaking to a fully mature Monroe, and it felt a little strange. Did you know your brown skin was the first brown I ever seen. It had been seared in my mind as the most beautiful thing in the world. I thought surely there was nothing else in life as rich as your honey kissed skin. I wanted to put my hand over my ears. Monroe as a boy had a way with words. And there was no doubt in my mind that Monroe as a man would be just as deadly, if not more. Before he disappeared, I could sit and listen to him talk for hours. But he always had a way of unraveling me that I had to protect myself against at all costs. He was the only one to ever make me feel as if I was not in control of myself. You know, he continued to speak. Several times over the last decade, I lay near death. And... I wanted to give up. I wanted to stop fighting. I was so tired of fighting. And then I remember that beautiful brown and I prayed to Yah for strength. I prayed that, that he brought you back within my reach. He brought his powerful hands up in front of him, looking down at him as he made a fist. My heartbeat increased. And no matter how I told myself I wasn't afraid of him, it wasn't working. Just the thought of it caused me to fight. I promised Abiyah that I would fight any demon that came my way and overcome any obstacle, pass any test, and no matter what you all thought, I would always serve him. Always. The last of his sentence was a growl. And then in a dream, he showed me your brown. And I was holding it in my hands. I used images of you to breathe. He looked towards me with angry eyes. His face was contorted in rage. After all this time, after what you did, he pointed at me. You dare walk in my house and ask me for a divorce? I swallowed as I took a step back. Okay, so maybe, just maybe, I shouldn't have said that because my words clearly had pissed him off. And I ain't gonna lie, he was scaring the hell out of me right now. I just, I just thought, I whispered, what, he asked as he began to stalk me. What did you just think? I licked my lips. Well, um, I thought after all this time that maybe we should. He held his head back and laughed without humor at the top of his lungs. I jumped. Dear Yah, help me. Or maybe he was telling the truth and Yah had put me back in his reach for punishment. Still, I was raised to call on Yah. 
And he was my father too. I am his daughter. Surely he won't abandon me. Sweet little Anataya. The covenant was made and sealed with your blood. Sweet, sweet Anataya. You can't just walk away from that. He taunted me as he took another step towards me. I took another back because the look in his hazy gaze was unstable. I used to crave your touch, he continued. The sound of your voice. I wanted, I wanted to own you. I wanted to control you. You were the only thing in this world that was exclusively mine. And then when I finally got a taste, it was the sweetest nectar I had ever sampled. I thought, I thought I could be happy. Finally, I could have that beautiful brown. But big ass lion was always there. He balled up his fist. You know, I used to want to knock that dude out. I tried, twice. I wanted to laugh at him because, yeah, that was funny. But he was unstable and there was no telling what an unstable Monroe would do. And let's not forget your fierce protector, Dawid, with his, with his amazing ears. Amazing ears, my ass. That nigga was nosy. He slammed his fist in his hand as if he wanted to hurt them, as if he hated them. Always keeping a watchful eye on crazy ass Monroe. Monroe wasn't never good enough for Lion's little princess, was he? He was so full of rage that he was practically growling his words. But guess what, sweet Ty? <laughs> guess what, my songbird? Lion ain't here, and neither is nosy as thou weed. Oh, hell no, nah. see? That was all the threat I needed. I turned and I ran at full sprint toward the door. He let out some kind of battle cry laugh that caused chills to race down my spine. He had turned into a wild man. He was a damn maniac. Damn it, Ty, don't run from me, he called after me. When I rounded the corner, the sight of the wolf now hunched down growling at me in front of the door caused me to go the other way. I ran up the stairs and I cried out when I saw Monroe coming towards me, moving faster than anything I had seen in a long time. And instead of running up the stairs, he leaped up on a banister and climbed up it doing that Spider-Man thing he does. I kept running, but he leaped over the rail and landed in front of me. I tried to turn around and go back the other way down the stairs, but he grabbed me and snatched me off my feet. No, I yelled, swinging at him. He dodged the swing, forcing me to turn in his arms, where he snatched Songbird off my back and tossed it to the side. Now, I knew my fighting skills was nothing compared to his. It was a fact. Monroe will go down in history as one of the best fighters to ever live. Like Dawid, it was one of his gifts from the Heavenly Father. And if his body was any indication, he had only gotten better over the years. But still I tried to fight with everything I had. I tried to remember how he used me, how he had lied to me until he got what he wanted, how he had laid me down and made love to my body and made me feel like, like I never would imagine I would feel only for the next day to turn around and treat me like one of his skanks. And I let that anger, I let that anger fuel me, fuel my movements. Not enraged, I brought my knee up hard, but he was prepared and he brought his knee up to block mine and I yelled out because it felt like I had broke my damn leg. That only enraged me more. I screamed in pure frustration as I felt my temper just losing as I began to swing at him with tested combos. He dodged each one of my blows in a way that caused me to hurt my fist by slamming them into his hard muscled arms. I tried to headbutt the nigga, but he moved and the momentum of me headbutting sent me flying down the stairs. I was about to cry out, however he caught me at the last minute, slamming me back against the wall while pinning my hands behind my back. And the bastard had the nerve to be laughing at me. I saw red. I hate you, I yelled in his face. He had me good and pinned up against the wall with his big body pressed in front of mine. No, you don't. 
you love me. He whispered in my ear, taunting me. His mouth was so close to my ear that his lips gently brushed up against them. At the same time, he pressed his strong body against the, my soft one, causing me to feel feelings I hadn't felt in over a decade. And that really angered me. Damn, not again. I can't let him use my body as a weapon against me. And he was good at that. No, I don't. I hate you, I yelled, my body shaking with my rage. If I had the strength of my father, I, man, I will, I will break this dude right now. My fierce little lioness, he whispered in my ear, and I almost moaned. You love me. You love everything about me, including the way I made love to your body. You love my hands. You love my tongue. And I know for a fact you love my... Let me go! I screamed, cutting him off as tears came to my eyes. He was breaking me down. He was taking me to a place I didn't have to be. Nobody knew how to get me to this level of frustration like him. When I was a girl, he would tease me like this until I broke down crying all the time. Never tie, he growled between clenched teeth. I'll never let you go, baby. Hey, my robe. A deep voice called as someone walked through his front door. Whoa. We both looked down at the judge, who was standing at the foot of the stairs, looking up at us with shock on his face. Um, bruh, what you doing? He called up the stairs. What you want, Ock? Monroe asked without taking his white gaze away from me. Yeah. I'm gonna need you to babysit for me. I'm gonna have my hands full trying to deal with my new companion. She is timid as a kitten, and I don't want Jacob to witness his father get control of this situation. Can you look after him for a few hours? Still enraged, I turned to stare down at the judge for two reasons. First, you let this nigga babysit your kid, I asked, cause I couldn't help. Who in their right mind will leave a small child with Monroe? The judge had the nerve to look bashful. Well, he is my neighbor and Jacob loves him. What are you over there doing to my sister that your son can't witness? I yelled, cutting him off. This got Monroe's attention, who was still looking at my face and neck with his strange eyes. He stepped back away from me, letting me slide down the wall until my feet once again touched the floor. Wait. You got Guinea over there? The judge gave him a look that said his hands was full. Man, this girl then locked herself in my bathroom and she refused to come out. So now I got to go over here and try to get her out of there. But Jacob looking, watching everything. So can he stay over here with you for a little while? Yeah, why not? My role muttered. My mouth dropped. I could not believe this. Hey, don't you hurt my sister or I'll hurt you. And I don't mean a little hurt. I mean, I will cut you up in little pieces and feed your body to these wolves. I yelled down at him. He blinked up at me before lifting one side of his mouth in a grin. Whew, bruh. I thought I had my hands full, but you, you got your hands full. I don't envy you. I he turned, shaking his head as he disappeared out the door, before returning moments later, depositing a little mini him in Monroe's rose parlor. Be good for Monroe's son, he said before leaving back out the door, shutting it quietly behind him. When the kid saw Monroe, his face lit up. Monroe, he yelled before flying up the stairs and throwing himself in Monroe's arms. Hey, buddy, Monroe said, catching him in his arms. He switched him to one arm and then reached up and grabbed my hand none too gently and practically pulled me down the stairs. Little Yakov peeped around Monroe's big shoulders to me. Who is that? He asked. Who, buddy? The girl with the brown hair. Monroe glanced back at me. Oh, that's my wife. But she's a bad wife. I punched his arm. Don't tell him that. Why is she a bad wife? The little fella asked. Moreau led us to a beautiful kitchen. A bit empty, but beautiful, and placed the kid on the big island. Well, she's a bad wife because she's a bad person. 
My mouth fell open. That bastard! I looked at the kid. Don't listen to him, Yakob. I'm not a bad person, and I'm not a bad wife, because I'm nobody's wife. See what I mean, buddy? She lies as well, Moreau said as he opened the fridge. He reached in and touched several things in the fridge before he settled on a jug of what looked like orange juice. Then he went to the cabinet and touched the air next to it before his hand settled on that cabinet. I frowned as he reached in and touched several glasses before his hand settled on the little blue cup. He took it out and filled it up halfway with juice before bringing it back to Yakov. Here you go, man. Did you eat? He asked as he patted his head. The little boy shook his head. Nah, when my dad picked me up from Imarina's house, he said he was going to make dinner when we got home, but the pretty lady was mad and she said she didn't want to stay with us. So dad was so busy trying to get her not to be so mad that he forgot to cook dinner. Monroe nodded before he headed back towards the fridge. Here, um, let me get it, I told him walking past him. Tears blurred my vision as I looked into the fridge. Dear Yah, dear Yah, he was blind. I grabbed something in the Tupperware bowl and looked in the cabinet till I found a pot to warm it. Silently, tears fell down my face. What's the matter, songbird? Monroe muttered from where he stood leaning on the island facing me. I wiped at the tears that fell. Nothing, I lied. Sound like you crying. I'm not. Yes, you are, ja Jacob said. No, I'm not, baby. I, I just got something in my eye, that's all. See, buddy, I told you. She lies, Monroe muttered before he left the kitchen. When I was done warming up what looked to have been some kind of leftover vegetable soup, I spooned some in a bowl for the little man, and I sat at the table with him while he ate. Monroe was completely blind. You see, only I knew that he started to go blind years ago. Only I knew that he had been born colorblind. Only I knew that the first time he heard me sing was the first time he ever saw color. Only I knew that he saw the spiritual world better than he saw the physical world. And after the angel had touched them in the gym that day, he developed white specks in his eyes, making him able to see more of the spirit world and even less of the physical. Late at night, when everybody was asleep, he used to climb up in my window and tell me how he was terrified of losing his view into the physical world completely. How many times when he was a boy had he laid his head in my lap and cried, fearing only ever being able to see into the spirit world and now he was blind he can no longer see in our world gina put her ear to the bathroom door listening for any movement in the house it sounded as if the big jerk had left she exhaled as a smile came to her face and then she turned around and looked at that beautiful clawfoot tub. Oh, yes, she said, clapping her hands together. It had been over 10 years since she had taken a bath. After checking for the third time to make sure the door was locked, she walked to that beckoning beauty, praying to Yah for hot water. It had been 10 years since she submerged her body in hot water. She and Ty had made do with whatever extra water they could, you know, find to take care of their vital areas. Which means things like her hair had to wait till they came upon a body of water. Needless to say, it had been a while since she washed her hair. With fingers that shook with anticipation, she turned on the faucet and put her index finger underneath the water, holding her breath. When after a minute the water ran hot, she almost got tears in her eyes. Quickly, she put the stopper in it. Who knew how long this water would run hot? She didn't want to waste a drop. On a small cabinet next to the sink was a bottle that looked like it held shampoo. Homemade shampoo? 
butt shampoo. She put a little in the water and laughed out when it began to bubble up. Quickly, she shed her clothes and carefully stepped in the steaming hot tub. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this great blessing. She cried as she reached up and began to unbraid her long hair. So excited to be able to wash it with actual shampoo. She submerged her whole head in the water, running her fingers through her hair. Then she put shampoo on her head and began to massage it in. Oh, she moaned, using her nails to give it a good scrubbing. Then she dunked back down under the water and rinsed. When her head emerged again from the water, she froze. Someone was walking down the hall towards the bathroom. Gina ya. A deep voice came from the other side of the door. Damn, he's back, she whispered to herself. Go away, she called out. He chuckled. I can't do that. Why don't you open the door so we can have a conversation like adults? She frowned at the water. This was his second time insinuating that she was acting childish. And maybe she was, but she didn't know what else to do. The truth was, she had never been alone with the man without at least one of her family members being around. For the last 10 years, it had been only Ty, but Ty was rough. Having her around had almost been like having her father or brother around. Almost. I don't want to talk to you, she called to the door. Why not? Because you're a liar. He was quiet for a moment. Open the door, sweetheart, or I'm going to have to break it down. I'm not your sweetheart. So you're not going to open the door? No. She sat and watched the door with wide eyes, waiting for him to bust it down. The doorknob jiggled a little before the little lock in the door popped out and then the knob twist and he opened the door. Gina screeched, ducking down further into the water. At first he looked surprised to see her in the tub, but then a smile settled on his face as his eyes took her in completely. See what I mean? You're such a liar, she spat. He held up his hands. What did I lie about? You said you were going to knock down a door. You had the key the whole time. Ah, well. You can't fault me for taking the simple away. She rolled her eyes at him, looking away from him to the wall. What else did I lie about? He asked, squatting down so that she didn't have to strain her neck to look up at him. When she turned and saw him at eye level, the breath caught in her throat. You lied in your statement to the elders. You know we were innocent. We were being held captive like your men. We helped them get free. Why did you lie? He held up his fingers. First off, I did not lie. I found some of my supplies in your camp. Yeah, but we didn't rob your truck. We robbed the people who robbed your truck. You could have spoke up for us. A slight grin appeared on his handsome face as his eyes fell to her slim, graceful neck. It was the color of honey. He wanted to kiss it and see if it was as sweet and soft as it looked. Why would I do that? He asked. She looked at him shocked that he would admit to such treachery. Why wouldn't you do that? He looked down at his hands for a moment, chuckling. Because I wanted you, and I didn't want you to have a choice in whether or not I could have you. His gaze was so intense. She scooted down further in the bath, hiding more of her body underneath the bubbles. Yeah, well, my daddy always says, ill-gotten gain is short-lived. And your daddy sounds like a smart man. But this here ain't ill-gotten game. It's fate. She looked at him as if he had grown a monkey out of his head. Fate? Oh, wow. Is that what they're calling it these days? He shook his head at her. I don't know what they're calling it, little lady. I only know what was shown to me. She exhaled as if she had heard this story before. Okay, okay, wait. Let me guess... You're a prophet, right? So please tell me, prophet, what was shown to you? He grinned. You? For a moment, his statement had taken her completely off guard because his direct gaze felt as if he told the truth. Me? He nodded his head. You. I saw you, just like I was shown this place. 
I saw you standing next to me, looking up at me with eyes full of love. She looked at him for a moment, pressing her lips together before she erupted in laughter. She laughed so hard she almost sunk down in the bathtub again. Wow, that is the funniest thing I've heard in a while. He didn't seem moved by her laughter. In fact, the grin was still on his face. That's okay, you'll see, it'll come to pass. Well, Prophet, do you see yourself leaving my bathroom so that I can finish bathing? He nodded. Yeah, after me and you get an understanding about a few things. Okay, she would agree to anything to get him to leave. I wanted to talk to you about my son. Jacob, she asked. He nodded. Cain. He looked down for a moment, thinking about his words. His mother died two years ago of the flu, and he took it pretty hard. Her eyes softened. Oh, were they close? He thought about it. Yeah, I guess. But that's not why he took her death hard. Oh, no? Why? She asked. A week before she got the flu, he overheard us arguing. She complained about how hard it was to bring up a child in this day and time. You see, before we started the eldest board here, I would have to be away from home for long hours at a time. And she felt that she was raising Jacob by herself. Anyway, he overheard us and then she fell ill. And somehow he got into his little head that it was his fault she died. Gina's heart broke for that little fella. The healer in her wept. It's why I took him next door to my rose, so that I could talk to you. I don't want him to think that you're acting out the way you do is because of him. She nodded. Sure, I understand. I mean, had I known, I would not have. Wait, did you say my rose? He nodded. Cain, the blind swordsman. I don't know what it is about him, but <laughs> Jacob loves him. It's strange because outside of training the army, he never allows anyone to get close to him. Just Jacob and those wolves. I don't understand it. She nodded. That's funny. I knew a Monroe once. She smiled. And he loved my sister something desperate. He loved her with all his heart and soul, and everybody else could see it except my sister. She shook her head. He chuckled. No, that, that's real funny, because your sister is next door with the blind swordsman right now. My sister is next door? She asked, jumping up out of the water, realizing too late when she felt the air touch her naked body what she had done. She slid back down into the tub, blushing so bad her face was beat red. Snapping his mouth shut, he cleared his throat. Well, <clears throat> um, his gaze went down to the water as if it had a will of its own, but the bubbles was in place hiding her beauty from him. He licked his lips as images of her wet, supple form came back to his mind. Uh, my name is Malachi. She nodded, looking at the wall, unable to make eye contact with him. Oh, okay, I thought it was Judge, she whispered. He chuckled. Um, are you finished with your questions? Can you leave now? He nodded. Um, yeah, yeah. He stood, and, and it was as if he couldn't control his eyes because they kept going back to the water where her breast lay just underneath the suds. Malachi, she whined. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I got it. You know what? Let me go get Jacob so that you can meet him when you get out. She nodded. Okay. His eyes strayed back down to that water. She exhaled loudly. Yeah, yeah, I'm going, I'm going. Finally, he left out the bathroom, pulling the door behind him. Gina put her hands over her blushing face and sunk back into the water, 